uses perfectly qualified. Welcome. It's wonderful to have you worshiping with us today um, on this, the third Sunday in Lent. I invite you to stand if it's comfortable for you, and we'll begin this morning with our time of confession and forgiveness. We worship as we live our lives. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin, and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together in our opening hymn, Glory to God, number 25 in the Off the Wall Books. Give glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Give glory.
join together in the prayer of the day. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world throughout the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it, and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I invite the congregation to be seated, and at this time we'll sing Jesus Loves Me, and the kids can come forward for the kids' message. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me Hi. so, little ones to him no. belong. I've got someone else to do it. But he is strong. I thought you yes, said you were going to Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, you guys remember getting this? Jesus Did you get one of these How are you doing today? Good to see you. Guess what I have here? An invitation. Have you ever gotten an invitation before? Isn't it fun? It's fun to get an invitation. I wonder what it says. It says, you are invited. I'm so excited. What does it say? You are invited to play with me today. Let's have fun. Well, that sounds like a good invitation, doesn't it? Yeah, I think I would really like to do this. Well, I wrote this invitation to myself. But when we get an invitation, it's really exciting because that means that somebody wants us. Have you ever been invited to a birthday party or invited to something at school or at church? Yeah? It's kind of fun to be invited, isn't it? Yeah. Because you know you're going to have fun, and it means that you're going to be included. Yeah, that you're a part of it. Well, on the other hand, 
It can be sad when you don't get invited to something. I remember one of my daughters was going to have a birthday party, and she had 15 friends. But we said, you can only invite eight because we don't have enough space. And she cried because she said, but I have 15 friends I want to invite. And now we were telling her that she could only invite half of them about. Well, we softened our hearts a little bit, and we let her invite all 15 of them. But only like uh, 10 of them came anyway, so we had, <laughs> we had enough room for everybody. <clears throat> but it's sad, isn't it, when you can't be invited to something? Well, let me show you another invitation. Does this Bible look familiar? Some, you get it when you're younger here at church. This book is the Bible, but I call it the biggest invitation in the world. It's full of stories about Bible characters and about Jesus and his love for us. But basically, it's God's invitation to you saying, I invite you to be my friend. I invite you to be my child. I invite you to have fun in your life because I love you. Wow, what a great invitation from God. And you know what? There's more than eight people get to come. God invites everyone. God invites everyone to be a part of his family, even that naughty kid down the street. <laughs> God invites all of us. None of us are excluded. We're all part of it. And I think that's really good news. Um, when people come to church here, like today, or when we come to Sunday school, we find out that you are loved and you're invited. But guess what we get to do when we leave this place? We get to invite people, not to come to birthday parties, but to come to church. We get to invite people, say, hey, come to church with me, or we can invite them to be our friends, and we get to show them God's love. Remember, just like God invites all of us, we are to invite people too not just to play with, but to love them and be kind to them. Okay, kids? Remember, you are invited. That's good news. God loves you so very much. Thanks, guys. You can go back to your seats. And it's time for our readings. Our reading is Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 9. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, for the reading of the gospel, if you feel comfortable, I invite you to stand. The Holy Gospel this morning is from Luke chapter 13. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way that they were worse sinners than all of the other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 
who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than anyone else living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, but found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, but I still find none. So cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So we are in a Lenten series on our Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings called a Lent Un Journey. In other words, we're coming up with several unwords that sometimes we feel as Christians and uh, we bring that to the cross and we see what Jesus has to say to us. Today's theme is unfit. Sometimes we feel unfit. Have you ever felt unfit? Pastor Ness, I'll have you get ready for that video. Uh, I think a lot of us feel unfit at times. We, we hear at church that we're to be called children of God, but then we don't feel any more holy. Or we're asked to bear spiritual fruit. But then we go home and we wonder, what, what is spiritual fruit anyway? Uh, we're told that we need to forgive. But then we realize that you know, there are several things for which we feel unrepentant. And when it comes to forgiving other people, well, that can be really, really hard. We're called to be people of God, uh, Christians in the world, strong Christians so that we can make a difference in this sometimes troubled world in which we live in. But yet, when it comes down to it, we typically don't see our strengths in this. We see more of our weaknesses. Yeah, sometimes we feel unfit to be called people of God. But you need to know that the Bible is full of stories of unfit people who God uses. In fact, Jesus is attracted to unfit people because he knows that unfit people are humble enough that he can use them to his glory and can do things in his kingdom. And he uses those who might not look like they would be used by God. Lots of Bible characters like this. I'd like to show you a video called uh, The March of the Unqualified that shows you several Bible characters. Think God can't use you? Can you tweak the sound on that, Pastor Nessa? Think he only uses perfectly qualified people? Take a closer look. Moses was not a great speaker. Jonah ran from God. Jacob was a liar. Noah got drunk. Rahab was a prostitute. David had an affair. Jeremiah was depressed a lot. Solomon was rich in wisdom, but poor in lifestyle. John the Baptist was just plain poor. Timothy was too young. Abraham was too old. Lazarus was dead. Sarah was barren. Naomi was a widow. Gideon and Thomas both doubted, and so did Sarah. Peter lacked self-control. James and John were self-righteous. Paul had a short fuse. Well, so did Peter and Moses. Actually, lots of people did. God's army isn't perfect. It never has been. It's the march of the unqualified. Get in line. Yes, the march of the unqualified. That's who we are. Uh, maybe you can relate to the idea of uh, a march or the church being God's army. Uh, maybe, maybe not, but I'd like to read to you uh, a short story it, uh, in his book entitled The Way of the Wolf 
Martin Bell describes the church, God's unfit people, as his ragtag army. So in his book, The Way of the Wolf, Martin Bell writes, I think that God must be very old and very tired. Maybe God used to look splendid and pretty neat in his general's uniform, but not anymore. He's been on the march a long time, you know. And look at his ragtag little army. All he has for soldiers are you and me. (laughs) Silly little army. But listen, listen, even the drumbeat isn't even regular, and everybody is stepping out of line, out of step. And there, you see, God has to stop along the way to pick up one of his tinier soldiers who decided to wander off to play with a frog or to run in a field or whose foot got tangled in the underbrush. And then God has to stop yet again. Uh, God will never get anywhere that way. And yet, the march goes on. But do you see? All the marchers over there have broken up into little groups. Well, look at that group over there, pretty much up to the front. Now, there's a snappy outfit. They look pretty much alike, only the problem is, is they're not wearing any shoes. They're carrying their shoes in their hands. Oh, that silly little army. They won't get far before God will have to stop again. Or how about that other group over there? They're all holding hands as they march. The only trouble with that is that the two individuals on the end of each line will soon discover that their hand isn't holding any hand, and there it is, alone, reaching out, looking for someone, and then they decide that they will hold hands. And then you have a circle, and they start marching in a circle. And the more people that join in, the larger the circle will be. Now, the problem with large circles is that it seems as if you're going someplace, but you're really not. You're just marching in circles. And so God must stop again. You see what I mean? God will never get anywhere like that. And then, if God were more sensible, he would take his little army and he would shape them up, right? Who ever heard of a soldier running out and stomping out in a field? But even more absurd is a God who stops, goes and gets that little soldier and brings him back. But that's God for you. His is no endless empty march. God is going somewhere. His footsteps are deliberate and purposeful. Now, God may seem old and tired, but he knows where he's going. And God means to take every last one of his tinier soldiers with him. Only there aren't going to be any forced marches. And after all, there are frogs, and there are flowers, and there's underbrush and thorns along the way. And even though our foreheads have been signed by the sign of Jesus, the sign of the cross, We are but only humans. And most of us are afraid. Most of us are lonely. And we would like to hold hands or cry or run away. And we don't know where we are going. And it doesn't seem like we can trust God, especially when it's dark out and we can't see anything. And God won't go on without us. And that's why it's taking so long. Listen. The drumbeat isn't even regular. Everybody is out of step. And there, you see, God keeps having to stop along the way to pick up as one of his tinier soldiers who decided to wander off and play with a frog or run in a field or whose foot got caught in the underbrush. God will never get anywhere that way. Yet, the march goes on. Well, I think that's a great short story that is a really good uh, symbol of who we are today as God's people. Oh, I know that God isn't old or tired, but I think that thought of us being a ragtag group of people is, is pretty fit. Our life highway is long and it's windy and it's littered with pitfalls and dangers and depressions and distractions and disappointments and the list could go on. But we have a father, mother, God. The image in the stories of a general who will stop the march of eternity to find us, care for us, and restore us all by God's grace. That's who God is. 
I think of a couple of Psalms. Psalm 16, verse 11. You make known to me the path of life, this path. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Or how about Psalm 119, verses 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. So I say, march on, O ragtag army, unfit as we are, kind of like that fruitless fig tree in the gospel, unrepentant. Sometimes we have a clear vision of who Jesus is and we feel really connected with our faith. But then there are other times when we feel a bit screwed up and rather unrepentant, stubborn people. Yet God gives us another chance and another chance and another and another and another. That's what God's grace is all about. Let's not mistake the meaning of the, the uh, story, the gospel we heard today. God isn't about to cut us down as the fig tree who bears no fruit. I think Jesus' story represents hyperbole, which is a, an over-exaggerated way to state a point. You know, when his people said to him, uh, what about those people the Jewish people whose their worship service was desecrated by Pontius Pilate? Or how about that tower that fell down and killed all those 18 Jewish people? Now, evidently, back in those days, if a tragedy happened, if something bad happened to somebody, th their logic was that it was because they deserved it. It's the only way they could explain it. So the victim was at fault because of their evil lives. Now, Jesus looks at them and he takes the blame off of anybody. He tells them not to judge other people, but those stories ought to remind you of your life, your short life in this dangerous world. And how about you be concerned about your own sin and maybe your own stubbornness to repent? Jesus is getting his disciples back then and us today. He's saying, get real with me. Don't, don't concern yourself with other people's sin. But let, that be remind, let you be reminded of the sin that you carry so that you can get honest and right with the Lord and receive his merciful forgiveness. Well, sometimes we are so unfit as Christians, and sometimes we don't bear the right fruit. But God isn't a God who's going to cut us down. God is a God who's going to lift us up and restore us so that he can just chase the sin right out of us so we can follow him in joy. And in Isaiah, we hear God's invitation. I mentioned it to the kids. Come, come, come to the waters, all who are thirsty. In other words, those who, you know what your need is. Come, come and be a part of my family. Come drink wine and milk. Come, it's free. It's unconditional love and acceptance for who you are. Only God has this great picture of what you can become. Unfit, are we? Yes, Unproductive of spiritual fruit? <laughs> I guess so. Unrepentant? At times. But unloved? Never. Unusable? Never. Amen. Let's sing our next song. got to be more than going back and forth from doing right and doing wrong because we were taught that's who we are come on get in line right behind me you along with everybody thinking there's worth in what you do then like a hero who takes the stage when we're on the edge of our seats saying it's too Introduce you to amazing grace. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, still the 
truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless no matter the hurt or how deep the wound is no matter the pain still the truth is the cross has made the cross has made you flawless could it possibly be that we can't believe that this unconditional kind of love would be enough to take a filthy wretch like this and wrap him up in righteousness but that's exactly what he did no matter the bumps no matter the bruises no matter the scars still the truth you to grace, grace, God's grace. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you flawless. No matter what they say or what you think you you to stand if it's comfortable for you and we'll continue with the prayers of the people. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church around the world in all its forms. For pastors, deacons, bishops, chaplains, and mission developers, for church councils, committee chairs, and all lay ministry leaders, for congregations that contemplate difficult decisions about the future of their ministry, Lord, in your mercy, for the health of this planet and the well-being of its creatures, for lands impacted by droughts and at risk of wildfires for fig trees and vineyards that produce fruit for the nourishment and delight, for animal habitats threatened by climate change, Lord, in your mercy, for those called into positions of civic responsibility, for judges, attorneys, and court administrators tasked with uncovering truth and delivering justice, for activists and community leaders who cast a vision of a more compassionate and equitable society, Lord, in your mercy, for those who call upon you for mercy, for all who live in poverty and experience hunger, for any who feel tested beyond their strength, for those who are hospitalized or near death, and for all in need of healing. Today, we pray especially for Brenda Smith, Craig Bren, Rick Nelson, Anita Amat, the family of Oliver Bates on his death, and those we now name in our hearts. We also pray for peace in war-torn Ukraine, and so many families who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, for the advocacy efforts of this congregation, 
for those whose faith leads them to speak difficult truths and engage in difficult conversations with policymakers, for those who promote mercy over vengeance or retaliation. Lord, in your mercy, accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for doing that. Appreciate it. When you're finished, I invite you to be seated. I have a few announcements for the good of our ministry together. Uh, the first announcement is that we will be passing the offering plates today. Um, and our ushers are going to uh, start handing those around now as I am doing um, the announcements. Um, since we are in the season of Lent, um, we are um, continuing our tradition of our Wednesday night uh, Lenten celebrations. Um, so we will have that this week as well. Um, we have uh, worship and soup supper. Um, I'm going to this <laughs> put them in order. Starting at 5.30, from 5.30 to 6.30, we'll have our soup supper. Um, at 6.30 here in the sanctuary, um, off the wall, we'll provide music. And then worship begins uh, at 7 o'clock, and that will be a service of Holden Evening Prayer. Um, we do have some additional spaces uh, for um, people to provide uh, soup and dessert for this evening. So thank you to everyone who did that for last week. Uh, we had an abundance, and we um, could use a few more sign-ups for this week. So um, thank you for helping us make those uh, gatherings possible. I wanted to make a note about um, summer camp. Uh, we had Paul Little from Good Earth Village with us last week to talk about the great ministries that are happening in camps um, around um, the ELCA. Um, I wanted to make a specific note that you'll see in, in the bulletin, there's a note about summer camp. Um, the church will pay up 40% uh, up to $150 uh, for your child or your family to go to camp. Um, and the code that's listed in here, this code is just for Good Earth Village. We will pay for whatever Bible camp you go to, but this code is only at Good Earth Village. So you'll just... The, the, if you're going to another camp, let me know and we'll help pay for that as well. But we... Um, I just wanted to clarify that. I'll get that specified in the bulletin next week. Um, and I'm dropping stuff over here. Just don't mind me. Um, um, a note, we are uh, doing our March Minnesota food share uh, throughout the month of March. So please, as you're out shopping, uh, grab a few extra items to drop off for the food shelf uh, or bring a monetary donation. Those monetary donations go a long way as well uh, for providing perishable items for the food shelf as well. And then one special um, announcement. Um, this past Friday was a special day to celebrate the 50th anniversary for Wayne and Kathy Halverson. Congratulations. You want to stand up? You can stand up. There they are. Oh, the lovebirds. Amazing. 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 I had multiple people request that I embarrass you <laughs> during church because of that. So... There you go. <laughs> Congratulations. I don't think I have any further announcements, so I invite you to stand as you're able and we'll sing our offering hymn. Everybody's got something to offer. Everybody's got something to offer. Young and old, the prince and the pauper. Everybody's got something to offer. In the name of the Lord. To the lost and the lonely ones, the message it is clear. We have all got a gift to give, our hands, our hearts, our tears. Everybody's got something to offer, young and old, the prince and the pauper. Everybody's got something to offer, in the name of the Lord. To the believers gathered here, the message, it is true. We have all got a gift to give in all we say and do. Everybody's got something to offer. 
everybody's got something to offer. Young and old, the prince and the pauper. Everybody's got something to offer. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you've blessed us with these gifts. Ourselves and our time and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set this feast for us, and even if we feel unfit to receive us to receive it, Christ has made us worthy. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Uh, we will serve communion today um, at two stations um, at the front, as we have been. Um, so we'll invite you forward at the direction of the ushers, uh, and you will receive a wafer. We have gluten-free as well, so please ask if that is your preference. Um, and then you can take um, a, a glass of wine, which is the darker red, or grape juice, which is the lighter yellow. I feel like there's another thing I'm supposed to say, but I think that's it. You'll figure it out. All are welcome at God's table. Then I've made mistakes. I 
metaphor in there somewhere. <laughs> I invite you to stand if it's comfortable for you. Now receive a blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together in our sending him everything, let everything that has breath. Instruments are out. Anyone who wants to play with us, come on up. <laughs> Young and 
Thanks be to God.